African literary scene is celebrating this year's winner of the prestigious Kane Prize for African Writing. Kenya's Okwiri Odwa scooped the top honour for her short story, My Father's Head, which explores the loss of her father via the themes of memory and loneliness. Well, the judges praised her work as subtle, tender and moving, the type of story you want to return to the minute you finish it. Well, Query is no stranger to literary accolades, and this latest honour follows on from the co commendation she received in the 2012 Commonwealth Book Prize for her novella, The Dream Chasers. Well, I'm delighted to say that she now joins me in the studio, and I'd like to say it by congratulating you, because it was a tough field and a very high standard from some prestigious judges as well. Oh, thank you. So well done. <laughs> but I mean, let, let's look at the story, My Father's Head. It's told through this narrator who works in an old people's home. Yeah. Um, she's about, she's in her 20s, maybe mid-20s, and she works in an old people's home, and she is coming to terms with the loss of her father, so reconstructing her father through memory. Yeah, so obviously without going too, giving too much away because we, we don't want to lose the sense of the story. So she, she lost him in tragic circumstances. Did he, how, how did she lose him? Well, it was, it was tragic, yes. I think it was an accident, more like a rude accident, something like that. But that's not very important. The important thing is how she reconstructs the memory and yeah, yeah. comes to terms with it. Yeah, and it's through that contact with a priest, I understand. Um, through the context of the priest, uh, it sets of an, an avalanche. So um, she starts to think about things that she hasn't thought about in a while, and she goes home and tries to draw him and things like that. So. And, it, it, and it sounds like a very personal story in many respects. Is, is that a fair interpretation? Well, it's personal because all of us are dealing with loss in some way. So, and. I guess every writer, um, every artist, I should say, creates from their own uh, personal experience. Sure. Maybe not translating word for word from their life experience, but uh, we, we deal with all kinds of loss. For example, um, dealing with the loss of childhood. Uh, when you find yourself an adult, one day you wake up and you're an adult, so you lost something and you're grieving it. So we're all grieving something. So, so in that sense, it's an interpretation of, of that, that sense of bereavement because we associate it with, with losing a person, yes. not so much losing ourselves as, yes, as well, absolutely. a part of ourselves. <laughs> but, um, but also as well, that's, it, it, it sounds like quite a tricky subject to tackle because in looking at this woman's experiences, you're also digging deep into yourself. and. What, what writers often say is that that's the hardest thing as well when you're trying to take out some of your own experiences and work them into a story. And it takes courage to do that, to share something with an, an anonymous audience effectively. Yeah, generally I think it just, it takes courage to write, it takes courage to produce any kind of art. And you take, you take bits and pieces from your own life and that is scary because you have no idea how the audience will interpret it, how they'll perceive it. And some of them uh, interpret it very directly, asking you, yeah, well, um, so your father died. No, um, my father is very much alive. It's just grief, different kinds of grief sure. that we write about. So it's um, gently forcing us to, to redefine what is grief, that it mustn't be restricted to just one thing, the loss of a person, the physical loss of a person. Yeah. And it's interesting as well because just looking at some of the, uh, the praise that was given to your story, comparisons were made with, with James Joyce in, in terms of the scope, the, the, the adventurousness, if you like, of the, of the narrative. I mean, do you, uh, were you, would you have been influenced by James Joyce or are you completely <laughs> separate from that? This is like some, something which I have perfected for myself. Um. I wouldn't say I was influenced by James Joyce, but I would say some of my influences would be in writers like uh, Toni Morrison and Zara Neale Hurston and um, Edward Dantigat and you know people like that. Um, so it's interesting how everyone who reads your work uh, sees something in it, but I would say that's also a reflection of themselves. So, <laughs> but it's quite, it's, it's quite flattering, though, to be compared to James Joyce in that sense. <laughs> Absolutely. But 
it's, it's the fact that this, this particular prize, it is for writing short stories. There are those who would say that writing a novel is perhaps more challenging than writing a story. I know that you're working on your debut novel at the moment, but would you, would you say that's a fair point, or is, is it, was it the other way around for you, that the, the novel was perhaps more of a challenge? I think this short story is a, is a challenge because you have, it's very compact and you have to say what you have to say in very few words. So there's, there's a start, there's a, there's a beginning, a middle and a conclusion and it happens very quickly. One of the shortlist is described it as a, as a sprint and the novel as a marathon and I agree with her. Um, I like the novel form because I'm able to meander, I'm able to, you know, stretch out. Um, talk about all sorts of things. I have a much wider palette to paint on. Mm. Yeah. And in terms of, of, of writing the story for which, which you've been awarded, I mean, how long did this actually take you to, to construct? Because obviously there is a word limit. And as you've said, you're trying to compress so much information into this, into this one format without overburdening the reader. Yeah. You've obviously done it very well. If the judges have said this is the kind of story that once you read it, you want to go back to it. Oh, thank you. Um, I have no idea how long it took. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I can't remember. Um, Was it something that you, you started and you would take a break from it and then reapproach it with fresh eyes and alter things accordingly? I think it was. It must have been. I have a folder on my computer called Scraps and I just threw everything in there that doesn't fit. So if I'm writing my novel and there's lost paragraphs that just don't fit in there, I just cut them and paste them in the scraps folder. And, and I think I, I must have built the story from there, you know, looking at all this material that I have and uh, trying to make something of it. So uh, it must have been a long, slowly simmering process. Mm. Yeah. What does winning an award like this do for you personally? Some, some writers are very disparaging of awards. They say, okay, they're nice things to have, but ultimately they're meaningless. But clearly, this must mean something. I would say especially for a young writer like myself, uh, it's very important. It buys me time, for example. It means I don't have to go out there and look for part-time job to support my writing. It means I can focus on my writing for now. Uh, I can finish my novel. I can focus on it without all the background noise of, you know, trying to survive. So, yeah, that's what it means for me. And it's quite a big prize because obviously there's a, there's a financial element attached to it, about £10,000, but there's also the chance to be a writer in residence in the United States. Yeah. Now, what does that entail? Uh, it entails, I think it's going to the Georgetown University uh, for residency, one month residency. Um, so that entails opening myself up, my, my work to new audiences and uh, opening up my worldview as well. So that's all something to look forward to, um, something I could never have achieved on my own. So the new audiences. It's very beneficial, uh, yes. Mm. Beneficial for you, but also African writing generally, because do, do you get a sense that perhaps, certainly from a European perspective, there's more of an interest in African writing, whereas perhaps it was pretty lukewarm or in some quarters non-existent before? Yes, absolutely. Also, uh, it's good that uh, African writing is diversifying and people can see that there's many ways of being an African writer, there's many ways of being an African, there's many ways of being a human being. So through reading diverse works and seeing different kinds of being, all of us benefit from that, you know. Mm. But then I suppose that some Europeans, when they think about African writing, they, they see it as very thoughtful, very structured as your story, for example, or talking about things which are unique to a particular culture from the continent. Nobody perhaps assumes that African writers also have an interest in romance, in science fiction, in adventure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, it's one of the things that I'm seeing some kind of renaissance in African writing. When people 
talk about African writing, I feel as though they have a very narrow view of it. But there's all sorts of things that fall under the wide banner of African writing, and it's diversifying. I've seen, I've seen, I think there's a man called Ivor Hartman, and he's been running the Afro SF series, the science fiction from the continent. I'm seeing this, this topic, literature. One of my shortlistees, fellow shortlistees, um, is very interested in doing graphic novels, and the genre, it's, it's widening and it's very exciting. So there's something to watch out for. Sure. And, and this is something which it hasn't just suddenly emerged. It's been incubating for, for a long time. And I, I get the impression that, yes, the, the award that you've won and indeed the Commonwealth Prizes is so important, but there, there are a generation of writers who preceded what you were doing. You know, they were also out there trying to, to get the world to notice what they were doing. I'm thinking, for example, of the late Nadine Gordima and Chinua Achebe. Now, their achievements are, are recognised, but, but the, the whole trend, everything they were trying to do, the spirit of, of really pushing African literature, it's always been there. Yeah. Um, I would say that where African literature is at the moment, ourselves as the younger generation of African writers, we are where we are because of our predecessors. They fought battles for us. We stand on their shoulders. So, mm. yeah. So, so how important was a figure like Nadine Gordima to, to you, for example? Just the fact that she's very outspoken about things she believed in. She's an anti-apartheid crusader. Um, she's very. She's a strong woman, and a writer. For me, that's. Inspiring. It's very inspiring that she's she's very vocal about things she believed in and mm. spoke up. And it's something that you carry with you, and which no doubt the, the threads of that you'll be working them in, into the new book. I mean, it is the debut novel. How advanced are you with the script? <laughs> Not that I'm trying to pin you to a date <laughs> now. But, um. <laughs> um, it's a very slow process. I couldn't say for sure that I'm here or I'm there because it changes. I think I'm here and then I wake up tomorrow and I feel like everything needs to be redone so I have to go back to the drawing board and think of my character. The mark again. of the artist, never satisfied. But look, <laughs> congratulations on that prize. You thoroughly deserve it and I'm sure we'll be hearing more of you in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.